Hi, I'm Dustin Gibson with OPT. I'm here to give you a quick introduction to astrophotography and why Fujifilm X-Series cameras are perfect for this application. Astrophotography has developed a reputation for being a very difficult type of photography. Fujifilm has done a fantastic job and I've become a massive fan of the cameras for a couple of reasons. The best thing about the cameras, I'd say, is the X-Trans sensor. So most sensors you're going to find a Bayer matrix on, which has a filter pattern of RGGB, being red, green, green, blue, repeating over and over again. And so going across either column, you're either going to see green and red or green and blue. And so with the X-Trans sensor, that's not the case. Any way you, you, cut the, you cut across the sensor, you're going to see all three colors. And on top of that, Fuji is already adapted to the HA region, the hydrogen alpha in space, which is what, in astrophotography, what most people are looking for when they want to shoot nebulae. So right out of the box, a Fujifilm camera will perform as well as most modified cameras in the HA region. And this is something that, when I first heard it, was really hard to believe. I had just purchased, actually, a modified camera, and it was a friend of mine that showed me the results he was getting, and I still had all of this green in my image, and comparing it to what was coming right out of the Fuji, it just shocked me how all of a sudden there were the nebulae and the deep, the darker blacks appearing, and so it looked like all of this new dynamic range in the sensor, but really what was happening is the camera was just pulling the actual data. So after going through a lot of equipment, this is what I've settled on. This is the equipment I use, and uh, this is what I've found to work best for me in getting my images. I started with an X-T10, which I absolutely loved. 16 megapixels on the sensor, which gives you those big pixels that you need to gather a lot of light. Um, and then these are the, the lenses that I just felt like anybody doing astrophotography really could not live without. This 90 is by far and away the sharpest lens I've ever used. And uh, for astrophotography, building mosaics, taking Milky Way shots, this one absolutely performs. The 10 to 24 is perfect for those wide landscape shots where you're going to have a building or a mountain, you know, with the Milky Way included. And a very, very sharp lens. And then the 14 is the first and fastest lens that I used that actually had no coma in the image, which was beautiful. Chasing that in photography is what most people are looking for with Astro because it shows so much with the stars in the corners. This one will do a fantastic job with it. If you really want to reach out there and get the deep nebulae or even galaxies, you go with uh, the big guy here, the 100 to 400 and then even uh, a two times teleconverter on the back and this uh, this gives you a lot more reach and in a lot of cases can perform like a telescope would for you so this one will give you access to those deep space objects if you have a tracking head and just kind of switching over into something weather sealed is the X Pro 2 and this has quickly become my favorite camera of all time. I absolutely love this camera and it gets a ton of use. It goes everywhere with me and this is the lens that stays on it most of the time, the 23. This lens is absolutely incredible and you'll see a lot online with people using this lens for Milky Way photography specifically and paired to a Fuji camera, it's really difficult to beat. You get a perfect view, perfect framing of the Milky Way and the nebulae just pop because of the HA sensitivity of the sensor. These, this is a fantastic combination for Milky Way photography. And so if you'd prefer to start with a body and just connect it to a telescope, there are ways to do that. And you can see at first that it's really not gonna make a lot of sense to find a way to get this on, but there are T-rings available, which is just telescope thread that will clip right on like a lens. And so once that's clipped on, now, the camera, camera body can screw right on to the back of the telescope. And so once you have that there, you just thread it on and you're ready to shoot. 
That's it. So it's a really a simple process. And then this telescope or whichever you choose becomes your lens. And so now you have a lot more reach, something more like what you would have had here, except you can go a lot larger in aperture. You can put telescopes that are 16 inches wide instead of, you know, 70 millimeters. So you can really get out there and gather a lot of light very quickly. And some of these telescopes are fast, just the same way camera lenses could be. You can get into the F 1.9 range. And so there are a lot of amazing tools available for astrophotography. And among them at the top of the list are absolutely Fujifilm bodies. So once you've decided, you've picked out the camera you wanna use and the lens, you have a couple of things that you have to figure out. And the first of those things is what aperture do you wanna shoot at? With Astro, what most people do is they just spin it to the fastest place they can get, which for this lens is 1.4. You're gonna gather a lot of light very quickly. And so generally when I'm shooting, this is how I set up my camera. I'll shoot the 23 on the X-Pro2. I'll set it to 1.4 or two. And at 1.4, I'll set it to 400 ISO, 800 at the max and my exposures are never longer than 28 seconds. At this focal length, I can usually get away with 28 seconds at those ISOs and, and that aperture and not have trailing stars. The longer the focal length you go with, the higher your risk of trailing stars at longer exposures. And so you really have to balance thermal noise, which you're gonna get with longer exposures. So if you go into a five or 10 minute exposure, you're gonna to start to heat up that sensor and that's gonna show as noise in the image. So you really wanna kind of balance that by getting to a faster aperture. That's why fast lenses like the 23 are so great for astrophotography. And you will also wanna balance that with your ISO it may be better to double your ISO, go from 400 to 800 or even into 1600 because you might have less noise going into 1600 than you would cooking the sensor for 90 seconds or three minutes. And so when shooting the Milky Way, usually what I do is I shoot single shot exposures and I stop there. A lot of people get really great results by shooting multiple frames and stacking. And if I want the best quality with the lowest noise, I'll do that. But with these lenses, usually what I find is that when I stretch the image, I stretch the histogram, I get so much out of single shots that I don't generally find a need for stacking. Um, if you're gonna be stacking, something to keep into consideration, stacking is much easier when you don't have the horizon in frame and when you're up above the horizon. Because as the night goes on, you'll find that the Milky Way is going to travel across the horizon and that may blur one or the other as you continue shooting the same target. I know it can sound like a lot all at once at first, but astrophotography can be as challenging or as simple as you want it to be. It doesn't have to be difficult, but if you want to go after these deep space objects and these longer exposures, I think you'll definitely find room there to push yourself. And astrophotography really is the most rewarding type of photography. Mm -hmm.